Hey guys. Hey Bruce. <clears throat> hey Anthony. Happy New Year's, you guys. Oh. Switch from lemonade to ginger ale. It's my big change. <laughs> All right, let's paint something. Before I start, I want to show you, in the past, using my brush cleaner, I've always used the, these little plastic containers, these two and a half gallon, uh, two and a half quart containers, because it's a perfect fit with a little Bob Ross screen in here. But, and then, you know, after they get to a certain, getting a certain amount, hey Dorothy! When they get to a certain amount of sludge in the bottom, sit them outside, pull the top off, and let it dry and knock the paint out of the bottom, reuse the container, or get a new container. But I've found recently that you can't get the lids for those anymore. So I was out Saturday, and I found this little dude. Check this out. This is a two and a half quart Pyrex container. It's glass. Hey, Pat. And it's got a vacuum sealed lid for it. It just unscrews, and uh, so that's we're gonna use. We're gonna try that and see how that works out. Because then I can just use a spatula to clean the paint out of the bottom. So that should work pretty good. Let's see how that goes. All right, so we're gonna paint something here. Today's my birthday. I don't publish that on Facebook, but now you guys know today's my birthday. I don't need that. What did you get out for? I need this. I need some liquid clear. We're going to start off the year with a black canvas. And we're going to do, but we're not going to do a night scene. We're going to do sort of like a, a dawn sunrise scene, maybe. You know how that goes with me. I kind of tend to change things as I go. But we'll see. We'll see. All right. So, I haven't even got started. I got paint on my hands already. So quick review from the year. I, what I use to clean my hands off, I use baby wipes. I use Pampers baby wipes. They're easy to get. Thank you, Pat. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, Dorothy. I, was, I, I wasn't a very good tax break for my dad. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to use some Bob Ross Liquid Clear. I think I can use that, I can use that over some more. Get arranged here. I haven't painted anything in a week. Let's do something here. All right. Let's check my Bob Ross brushes here. We get some Bob Ross Liquid Clear here on the brush. Let me just spread this in. Got a black gesso canvas here. From the tone, from the value of that, uh, this is probably, this is probably. I feel certain this is covered in mud just so that I made instead of I had some Bob Ross gesso but I think I used it all up. I got it on sale when when Hobby Lobby uh, dumped Bob Ross because I got it for like I don't know 50 cents or something like that. Matter of fact I have a drawer full of Bob Ross materials that I bought at Hobby Lobby because I pretty much bought them out. There's six locations here in, in Louisville. And I just drove around to every single one of them and bought everything they had. So I'm set. I'm set for this year and probably for a couple years to come. I shouldn't have to buy much of anything. Hate flies. I don't go through a lot of paint. Even though I painted a lot. So you know, last year I painted 100 paintings. Actually, I painted 101. The last painting I wasn't very satisfied with. It was an acrylic pour. It was okay, but I, I just don't really... It don't do it for me. The color pores don't just don't do it. I just I can't get my head. I don't. I don't know. I just can't can't get any artistic satisfaction out of that. I know some people do. That's okay. 
I'm glad they do. Hey, buddy. Thanks, Anthony. All right. Now, so we've got, we got some liquid clear on here, but I'm going to take this paper towel, and we're going to wipe a bunch of it back off. So let's do that real quick. Now, the good thing about liquid clear is you can't ever wipe it all off. It's going to give it your time trying to, but... But it's pretty hard to get too little, but it's really easy to get too much on a canvas. Hey, Diane. All right. So we're going to do a sunrise on this black canvas. So we can't do it the same as we would on a white canvas. Let's just get a brush here. Find something like it. Give me this one inch. So I had uh, some people ask me some questions about the brushes I use. Um, I use a bunch of different kinds. Um, in one in, in the one inch brush line, this is a one inch brush with the black handle. Um, I use uh, Kevin Hill's brushes. I like those brushes. They last a long time. So I'm just going to put some alizarin crimson on this brush. And we're going to kind of kind of rub this in here. I'm going to, I'm going to keep that corner over there a little bit. Not a laser in terms of get a little more in there. Got to kind of decide where the sunrise is going to be. Probably be maybe like right on the bottom third, maybe. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I need too much of that on the bottom. You hear that little chiming in the background? That's the glass on that Pyrex container that I'm using. I think it's going to work out pretty good. I don't see why it shouldn't. Now, when you're putting liquid clear on, if you're taking your brush back up to the canvas, make sure that it's don't that it doesn't have any Odom's mineral spirits in it because it will have a bad reaction with liquid clear. Well. I don't know if it's a bad reaction, but you won't like it. You won't like it. All right, so we'll just put some blue on this side a little bit. Yeah, that's okay. That's enough. Enough of that. Let's clean the brush. So, did all you guys have a good Christmas? We did. We, we do Christmas pretty big around here. It takes us about a week. It takes us four really concentrated days and then about three extra days to get all of our Christmas decorations up and out. And it takes us about nine days to put them away. So when do you start doing that? We're getting ready to go on a trip. So we're going to leave. We're going to be leaving home soon. All right. So let's start working on the sky some more. So I'm just going to get some, pick up some titanium white. Not a lot, just a little bit. That's kind of sad. All right, so we want the horizon to kind of be like right in here. So let's just kind of. that a little bit. I'm not going to over blend it just yet. There's a little bit more crimson right in here.
A lot of movement in this guy. A lot of movement in this guy. All right. Oh, been sick. I was sick yesterday. I'm kind of recovering. I was sick on... I started feeling bad. Let's see. What's yesterday? New Year's Day? I guess New Year's Eve. I felt bad. But, kind of came in. And then yesterday I didn't feel good at all. And, uh... But I got up and went to the movies because it was we were celebrating my birthday. That's the day my kids were off from work, so we went and did that. And then after I got home, I was just I was I was ra pretty ragged out after that. All right, so now let's start working on this. Now we don't. Put some of this. Uh, I'm gonna pull some of this yellow up in here. We don't want to get too much of that yellow into that blue. I've heard Bob Ross often talk about that, about green and blue in the sunrise. But actually here in the sunsets, um, you can actually, here in Kentucky at least, you can, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of green on the horizon in the sunset. All right, so I'm picking up just a little bit of white. I'm going to just move this color up a little bit. Now, let's blend all of that. I might put a little bit more. I think I need a little bit more cad yellow in here. Put that right on here. Yeah. But, you know, so I'm okay with a little bit of green in my sunrise. I don't, I don't want any yellow snow in my pictures, though. That's bad. That's a bad deal. Hey, Kenny Ray. All right. I'm going to switch brushes here to blend this. I'm going to blend this with a larger brush. A little Bob Ross brush, a two-inch brush. All right. this along pretty good. Alright, that looks good. I'm kind of happy with that. So it's been a pretty mild winter here. I know Anthony had snow early in the year, but we have not, we have not had hardly any snow, and it's about 50 degrees outside right now. So I'm just going to come back again. I'd rather still have us do one. More crimson right here in this part of the sky. There we go. Yeah. That looks a little better than all that blue, I think. Right now. I'll turn a little bit more lavender here in a second. I, d I just practice a lot. <laughs> Thank you, though. 65. Dorothy, I'm trying to remember. Do you live in South Carolina? Where do you live? Do you live in South Carolina? I don't know anything lives up in New York. All right, back. All right. Then we're going to push that sky back a little bit more here, a little bit. So let's do that. Let's go ahead. Let's just do that. So I'm going to take, set that brush aside for a minute. Yep, South Carolina. I thought, I thought that was right. I couldn't remember for sure. All right, so I'm going to pick up some phthalo blue on the knife. I'm not mixing a lot of this. Just about this much. Put that off on the side. Pick up some alizarin crimson. Pretty good chunk of crimson, though just because the blue is so much stronger. All right. All right, that looks pretty good. Now we could, well, why not? Well, I'll tell you what, let's do this a couple different ways just to kind of show you that you can. 
So we're gonna get some, got this um, alizarin and crimson color with this blue mixed into it, so it's sort of a lavender, dark lavender color. You can actually kind of put your clouds in with a knife if you want. Get the edge of it straight. There we go. Just kind of these little streamer kind of guys. I don't see a lot of people putting their clouds in with a knife, but you certainly can. Let's pick up a little bit of white. Mix with that. Maybe put a little bit of highlight on this. Let's see, the sun's going to be on. The sun's going to be down here, right? So I'm going to be on the underneath side of these. texture right there so we'll just kind of put a few more clouds just a couple more clouds on the streamer all right okay lots of snow yeah man Kentucky's kind of a weird state to live in because we well South Carolina I'm sure has the same issue that we have we're not we're not really uh, set up for snow. Our, our, just kind of like the north, not too set up for the heat. The uh, We're not too well set up for snow. I'm going to need some midnight black. I want to put some trees in here for a second, in a second, but put some midnight black mixed with this color that I just mixed up a minute ago. For the clouds, we'll just add some black to that. Midnight black, which if you if you take midnight black and you kind of put some Put some white into it, you'll see that it's kind of. There we go, I like that better. The, um, it's kind of purplish. So I'm just mixing up a dark color to use. Let's go to fan brush. I use this little fan. I, so what is this? I don't know what this is. Number six, I guess. Now, when you're drawing the fan brush through the paint, to get it loaded correctly, you should wiggle it back and forth like this and then turn it over and wiggle it back and forth in the paint. Load your brush up pretty good because you can't paint without paint. All right, so let's kind of, let's kind of, so we're going to, we're going to take this brush in at like a 30 degree angle. Let me see, wait till it catches up with the monitor. Yep. And then we'll just kind of, get some trees in here. Now, sometimes somebody, uh, somebody asked me the other day about this, though. And it's it's people tend to sometimes uh, put their trees too far apart, too uniform. So they'll they'll do them kind of like this, and they kind of look like fence posts. You don't want to do that. But if you do happen to get something going like that, see and you see all three of these trees are the same height. Then you just come back and fill it in. Take that tree up a little higher, maybe. We're taking a snow survey. Is it snowing where you are? Okay. Let me put that. Put a little bit of color below that. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that here in a second. All right. I guess that'll work for that. watched me before, you've seen me do this before, but 
but this is kind of a neat way to kind of add some extra stuff to your trees when they're dark like that and kind of so I've got just a thin amount of a oh, thin amount a small amount of white titanium white on here and it's right on the edge of the brush instead of if you want to go when it was dark if you go back and look at the video you see the brush is about half full of paint this is right on the tip edges we're just going to come in here and kind of create the insinuation that there's like a whole bunch of tree trunks way back in the back if you kind of move them up and down, it kind of moves the forest forward and backward. See all oh, those tree trunks back in there. All right. All right. All right. So I know it's past the first, and I'm supposed to have set my goal for this year. I set, I set myself 100 paintings last year. Um... I may set it a little bit lower this year because I have a bunch of different things I want to try to do with my paintings this year. So we'll, some of it involves uh, trying a couple different styles. So we'll see how that how that works out. Just had rain, yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of we've had a lot of rain. We've had a re we've had record setting rain. All right, so I'm going to pick up some cad yellow and some a little bit of sap green. We'll start laying in some of this landscape. So let's kind of now when you're when you're pushing this when you're putting this you already do this landscape stuff. You should when you let me just kind of show you a brush. It'll be easier. Ooh, big brush. I need a little brush. When you're applying instead of just tap tap tapping your paint this way like this when you make like when you're making. Uh, bushes take the take the brush and kind of push it push it into the paint like that push it and push it and when you do when you do that it'll make it'll make the brush flatten and create that edge and that edge works pretty good for, for laying in the paint so let's let's put in some of the landscapes so let's just kind of start right here Any questions as we go, of course, just ask. I'll be glad to answer anything I know. Anything I don't know, I'll be glad to tell you that too. All right. We'll kind of switch back and forth between how much green we got here and there. And you will notice as I'm, when I paint that I tend to change hands a lot. Because I'm an ambidextrous painter, so. one of the things I kind of want to work on this year. I'm spend a little bit more time with my right hand instead of my left. We'll see how that works out. Mm -hmm. Bring this landscape a little bit further out like that. You want to leave that dark in there because that's your dark is what's your friend there. Creates that, creates that depth you're looking for. And I just dragged my brush right there. Don't do that. Don't do that. Lift this up. There we go. All right. Now let's see. Let's pick up a little bit of this. A little bit of this. This is a new kind of green that I bought. I'm going to try it out for some of these highlights. Alright, I'm going to put some water in here, create some reflections. Oh, 
Uh, I need some more yellow. I just contaminated it all. So hang on, guys. Let's put some of these reflections in here. That looks pretty good. I'm going to clean this brush. So we'll do it right back out before we pull it across. I want, to pull a, I want to pull a dirty brush across there. So I think since I did 100 paintings last year, I think I will try to do around 80 this year. Let me just pull that up into the trees a little bit. Yeah. All right, now let's pull these reflections across. Thank you, Jen. Happy New Year to you, too. All right. So let's see. Let's put some landscape in here. Let's get a little bit of... I don't think we need to go too dark, so let's get a little bit of dark sienna in here. I need too much of that. Oh boy, look. This tube is almost empty. It's fun if you need to open a whole new tube of paint. Okay, who, who all thinks that's a good fun time to open a brand new thing of paint? Alright, so let's put some. We just put a little bit of landscape in here, just a little. So we'll bear down pretty hard on this knife. Just a little bit more up here. And then we'll put a little bit of highlight on with that. Let's do that. Don't need a lot, don't need a lot. And then, you know, let me just pull this to the side, excuse me. I don't want to do this. This is much easier. Let's put some water lines in to go with that. I don't want any thick water lines today for this. It's right here along this edge. Side. And as you guys know, I don't spend a lot of time figuring out what I'm going to do first. I just let it go, kind of let it go. Let's mix some of that darker color up with this green. There we go. Pull that across. some of these weeds and stuff up. Alright. So back to that green. And maybe yeah, let's stick with that for right now. So let's start off, let's just put a couple highlights in the grass. Right on the edge.
probably do a few more art shows this year. We did we did a half a dozen last year. They they were pretty fun. Mostly to get in the paint, get to meet some new people. Of course, getting to meet all you guys is fantastic. Paint some landscape in here. All right. Can you move the canvas a bit to the left, which is to my right, I think. Did I do it, Diane? Did I get you there? I think it did. I'm looking at the monitor. All right. Let's get some. Let's put a couple trees in. Ah, oh, you know what? I have some brand new script liners. I haven't even used them. Oh well, I don't even think I have them out yet. A little bit of linseed oil in it. I don't know if you guys remember Ed. He was my first student. He's the one that had a stroke. And uh, I taught him to paint after he had a stroke. But I think he'll be I think Ed will be back soon. He's he had some surgery this year. And uh, I think he'll be back soon. It's, oh man, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> this tree like right here in the middle of the, this hillside it feels like it feels like it feels like living there so let's pull it on up here it's not a very straight tree it doesn't feel like being a straight tree I don't know any trees that do unless they're telephone poles but you know he's kind of crooked he? not because somebody stepped on him he just feels free feels like Should have used paint thinner, probably. Mm -hmm. Probably would have worked a little better. Alright, so let's put a couple branches out here. And a couple, yeah, you know, maybe a little more. Let's move them out that way. Make bigger, who wants to be bigger than that? There we go. There we go. There we go. Alright. I'm just going to take that same paint and I'm going to mix it with some yellow for the highlight on this tree. Using that yellow from that sunlight there to cast that off. I'll just highlight that tree this way. We do need to highlight it because it's, it's running against that. I'm going to let it kind of fade off here. I'm going to let this in that black tip over there. Alright. Now, the next part, I'm going to go up upside. Let me see if I can find what I'm looking for on the table here. Hang on a second. What did I do with that? Heaven knows. It took me forever to find it the first time. Well, let's see. I'm oh, sorry. Let me see the knife. Somebody ought to live here, I think. So let's do... Yeah, like before. Trying to decide if somebody's gonna live out here or if this is gonna be like Mother Nature land. Let's see, let's see. Tell you what. Let's put another tree up here. Let me tell you what, let's make it a bigger tree. Let's, be, let's get a bigger tree. Let's do. Where is. Uh, oh. 
I'm gonna use this oval brush, half oval brush. I'm gonna pick up some of that dark color. On this half oval brush. Let's put a bigger tree, let's put a big tree in here. There you. So let's just kinda right about here. Well, I know you guys are like, oh, you just painted all that in there, now you. Well, we know it's back there, right? We know it's back there. All right, that looks pretty good. We know all those trees are back there. It's probably another creek back there somewhere. We can walk back in the woods later and figure it out, figure out what's back there. All right, let's pick up some, I'll tell you what, let's get a little bit of liquid light for this tree. Just a little bit. I got some liquid white for Christmas too. I think some people know me. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Alright, so pick up some liquid white, some sap green, some yellow. Let's just highlight this tree a little bit. Can you guys see that okay again? Let me move it again. It looks like I moved it back off of the thing again. No, that's the big tree right there. Okay, well, okay, maybe I had a nice spot. I don't know, I can't really tell. On the monitor, it's a little hard to see sometimes because the comments are on there too, and it so it covers up half my screen. So I have to look up both of them at the same time and hope I can, hope I got you. All right, so let's just kinda, we don't wanna cover up all that dark. I'll turn this in here down to enter into some bushes. On the bottom of that tree. Can't see the painting for the light. Swipe. I think it's. I think you swipe to the right. Swipe it to the right, Lisa. And that might make the notifications go away. I think. Right. So I'm just gonna put a second highlight on this on the back side of this tree. It's just darker. 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 Now, another step you could have done for this tree that I didn't do, but that you could do if you want to, is um, kind of, when you're painting a tree, you should think of it kind of like it's the back of the tree, and then the middle of the tree, and then the front of the tree. You paint those three things separately. So I, should, I could have put the trunk in there, but I got sidetracked. But we will put, the, let's put, what we're going to do is, did that help you, Lisa? Let me know. Let me know, let me know. All right. So let's get just a little bit of that liquid white. Where'd it go? Here it is. And a little bit of this dark sienna. And we'll just put a couple little, a little insinuations of, of branches in there. I don't know if you guys will be able to see that on the monitor. You may not. You may not. We're just putting just a couple little right. Okay, great. Don't be embarrassed. Man, all this all this equipment works so much differently on everything. Sometimes you swipe left, sometimes you swipe right. And sometimes you don't swipe at all. It's crazy. It's just crazy. All right. So I found a little tool I want to talk about. I want to talk about this tool. I'll show it to you really close if you haven't seen it before. It has two rubber ends on it. This is one end. This little pointed area. This is the other end. The slanty area. And uh, so this is a shout out to Wilson Bigford. Wilson, this is a, from Wilson Bigford's line. And it's a little paint eraser. It works really cool if you want to like come in here and stick a cabin in here. So let's do that. Let's kind of scrape this down like this. Just takes a paint paint down for you. So you can kind of and then you kind of use the pointy end 
you know, kind of figure out how you want your cabin to be. Like I think I want. Let's see how it has to fit in. Let's see. That's kind of. All right, so you can see I've changed where I wanted to go, how I wanted it to go, right in the middle of doing it, and that's okay. So you can see, you can kind of sketch this in here. Now, can you guys see that? Let me see if I can zoom that up so you can see that. Uh, hang on. I gotta wait for it to move up, and I'll be able to see it. See what you can see. So can you sit? Can you? S uh, come on, Vincent. I'm still waiting for it to catch up. All right, so you're not on the right. Let me see. I need to go that way. I'm trying to get it where you can see. Hang on. And I went too far. One more time. With feeling. All right, so right here. I've drawn this cabin in right in the paint. Maybe you can see it there, maybe hopefully, hopefully you can. Right there. Now, lots of times, probably one of the best things to ever happen for me was to figure out that there wasn't anything that I could do there was no mess on the canvas that I could make that I couldn't fix. I learned that from Nick Hankins, CRI, Bob from Ross CRI, Mary Marion Dutton, also a Bob Ross CRI. So I'm, I'm going to try to scrape the rest of this paint off a little bit so you can see it a little better. To make a point. So I'm going to just kind of scrape this cabin in here real quick. I'm just, the only time I'm pulling this knife away, I'm just wiping the wiping the edge of it off. That's a teeny little cabin on this, but I'm on a kind of a small, this is a 16 by 20, I mean a, six, a 12 by 16 canvas, so it's a little smaller than I'm used to painting. All right, but now you can see I've definitely kind of messed up the landscape, right? You guys okay? I just purchased a three, okay, okay, there is a three. They're pretty, pretty cool. I like them. But, you could actually just take your brush, take this brush, let's pick this paint back up, and go right back on the same spot, and put your landscape right back in there, see this guy, and voila. So hopefully that'll give you some encouragement, so if you have something on there and you don't like the way it is, change it. Not that big a deal. And I'm sure Anthony would tell you the same thing. Anthony's on. I don't know if he's, if he's like right by the thing. We both go at different times because that's when we're available. So sometimes I get to see us catch him live and sometimes not so much. But Although now holidays are over, I get to see him more. All right, so I'm going to just put a little landscape right here by this tree. Cover up his foot a little bit. So we kind of carved that that uh, cabin in there and then just poof erased it so you guys try that stuff out all right let me, I'm kind of I think I'm gonna put a little bit more highlight like right here on this corner just got paint right on my fingers I can feel it mm -hmm. I'm gonna get too light here because it's just sunrise just sunrise all right hey buddy I'm gonna be. I have been. I have been catching you on the side. Catching you on the side, and, but I still haven't caught up to all the paintings you've been doing. I mean, you've been on it like every day, You're making me look like a slacker. But I'll catch up now. Holidays are holidays are over. I catch up. <laughs> I want to encourage you guys to watch Anthony's grayscale painting, New York acryl, Central New York acrylic. Anthony is awesome. All right, so 
Yeah, I'm kind of done with that one. Let's I'll tell you what. That took about 45 minutes. Let's do another one real quick. What do you say? Let's do something on a white canvas. I'll tell you what. Let's try to do the same sort of a kind of a painting. But we'll do it on a white canvas. Let's see. Let's see how much different it will be. One thing about me, I got canvases. I've always got just some canvases ready to go. All right, so give me a second to gather my stuff up here. Uh, I think I'll just leave the, the palette doesn't look too bad for me. Usually my palette's a big mess by the time I finish. You be on at seven tonight? Okay, I'll catch you tonight for sure. Is, is it going to be my my birthday broadcast? <coughs> All right, let's get started. So let's get some liquid white. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess I better unzoom that. I want you guys to be able to see. There we go. So this is another, what is this, 12 by 16. Put some liquid medium, liquid light on here. Just have some medium on here. Yeah, I looked over and I was like, hey, I'm looking at the back of my hand and it's not working too good. A nice even coat. You don't want too much of this on there. Just enough. Just enough to let your paint to let your paint blend. Thank you, Dee Dee. I've stopped going by years now. I just go by mileage. I don't know if that's any better. <laughs> All right. Let's get some Thalo Blue. Get some thalo blue. And I start on the sky. Let's get going. Let's see. Let's do let's do like let's do some put some sky up in here. Let the brush kind of float around there. Kind of free. I like it kind of lighter as it gets towards the Let's pull a little bit of this in. Let me put some water in here. A little bit farther than that, but you know. You see right there is a dry spot on the canvas. A little bit of a dry spot right there on the canvas. Let's we'll put a little extra paint on it. That'll be fine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. All right. We'll take a dry brush and blend all that. Started counting backwards. <laughs> That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. I look back and I like uh, I people are like oh if I had it over to do it again I no I'm not that way I I wouldn't change it I wouldn't change it that one thing I think I got better because I just got all the stupid things I did all right, <laughs> all right. so let's just kind of blend this guy up we're gonna kind of use this little rolling little rolling kind of a thing I like to do kind of a light touch with that. Just push it back in Give us a little bit of movement in the sky, that's what we want. And then down here, we'll just kind of pull it in. The paint's wet and slick. The canvas is slick. We can pull it all around. Pull it from the bottom up, and it gets lighter and lighter when we go to the top. Alright. Well, hmm. What shall we put on this canvas? <laughs> yeah, D -D. Hey, Sonny D. How are you, darling? 
How's that new studio working out for you? All right, let's see. I need some color here. Let me get the color. Let's get some midnight black. Get a little bit of, let's get a little bit of that, but let's get a little bit of mountain mixture. Let's put some mountains up here. What do you say? What say, you audience? All right, so let's go. Let's go. Well, hmm. Yeah, maybe we'll put a couple clouds in the sky. I wasn't going to put any clouds in the sky, but I think I will. Decide how big I want my mountains to be. So, so while I'm trying to figure that out, uh, throw some clouds up here in the sky. been in it in a while. Yeah, me, I, today's my first day back. <clears throat> Anthony's been making us look like a couple of slackers, hasn't he? <laughs> He's been at it, man. He's been doing it. All right, so I'm just kind of blend these out. Puff them up a little bit. I don't want, I don't want, a lot of, I don't want any pretentious clouds today. Just some light little fluffy things back there in the back. Got him back there in the back. There we go. There we go. All right. All right, now let's put some mountains in there. Bear down on that pretty pretty heavy there right there on this corner. I think we'll just carry these guys all the way across. What do you say? Let's put one up here. Maybe it's bigger. care too much about what's going on down here but on the bottom part too much yet <clears throat> but we'll we'll get to that eventually all right so let's put let's take off the excess paint so we're not too concerned about what's going on in the middle okay maintain this edges these sharp edges though so I'm just trying to take the excess paint off because the more that you get off, the easier it is to get your paint to break when you put the next coat on. Alright. 
good start. <sighs> Some precocious mountains there. Let's do. Let's get. <clears throat> Let's start off with some <coughs> Dark Sienna. Get some more out here. So I got a little bit of little bit of paint right on the end of the knife here. I'm gonna start on this dark sienna part. Let's start. Let's start this way. I don't know how much of that you can see just yet. We may have to wait till the next layer goes on. Because it's kind of dark. <coughs> but it'll it'll give a good cascading tone when we start. This part over here looks like a cliff to me, so we'll kind of pull that straight down. And we'll have this mountain sweep around. Yeah. Oh, picked up some highlight color. That's all right. Hair. I know it didn't come off my head, so. Alright. <clears throat> Let's carry it. A little bit back there. <clears throat> and I'll spit some over here. Some down here on these. I have this mountain fold in front of this one. All right. Now, rather than go to white, let's go to let's go to yellow ochre. And pick that up, pick that on next on the highlight side. Then I fall off. There we go. A little bit, a little bit right there. I kind of both highlights at the same time with that one. Picking up that brown, so I gotta see me take the knife down, taking it back, cleaning the knife off, reloading it. <coughs> small amount, small amounts of paint, small amounts of paint. Maybe just head, like right here on this edge, with sticking up, I don't know if that'll even show, but we'll find out. Alright, <coughs> All right. <coughs> then let's take, <coughs> let's take some of that uh, yellow ochre, and some white. <coughs> Lighten it up just a little bit. Yeah, didn't quite get what I wanted out of that. Let's try again. <coughs> Sorry, my throat's been scratchy the last few days. My voice feels like it's starting to give out a little bit.
So we're building this up layer on layer. Now, <clears throat> take this dark sienna color. Man, that paint is so thick. Mm, I hope it spreads fine. That tube is probably three years old or more. Who knows how old it was when I got it. But I'm going to dig into this downward side just a little bit. Just because we don't want it to be too even on that side. I can't wait to start watching all of Anthony's videos, the rest of them, because he and I really do seem to feed off of each other. It's great to watch him. He paints something, gives me an idea, and then he kind of vice versa. It works out really cool. He's a great guy. And if you're into acrylic paint, that's the guy. That's, he's the guy to be watching. All right. Let's take some. So now this is some. This is pure straight midnight black. That we're adding on. And since it's darker, it creates a contrast. We could put this on before the brown, but I almost always, almost always put it on last. I, I don't know why. I just have it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could probably say, I could probably say that about Wendy too. <clears throat> All right. Well, then at least when he says, "Can you hear me?" you can you can just look at him like I answered ten times, but you just didn't hear me. Oh, you know what? That's not what I wanted to do. Sorry. Hang on a second. I have no idea what's going to go in the foreground here. We'll figure that out as we go here in a little bit. some white. I'll put some white on in here. And we'll tap it up into that brown a little bit. Just creating that mist around the mountain. For those of you who come in a little bit late, I'm using a, I changed my, uh, you can, yeah, if you go to uh, Ben Stiver's Fine Art, you can, and go to the video section, you can, you can watch it anytime you want. Text him more. <laughs> uh, Anthony, you're so mean. Okay, let's see. Let's get a dark brush. Let's get a dark brush. Today, let's, what do I don't know, we use the medium side. Well, let's use a number three fan brush this time, maybe. If I find one. Yeah. Is that one? Yeah. It's close enough. All right. We'll pick up some sap green. Some of that dark color we used on the first painting. Let's start putting some trees in here. Mm -hmm. That's not dark enough to suit me. Yeah, 
that's not dark enough to see me. <laughs> when you're working with black canvases, you don't have to worry a lot about are you getting it dark enough. I think that's probably getting things dark enough is probably one of the early challenges for people learning to paint. The paintings tend to come out a little gaudy because they're... It took me a while to figure that out. Uh, I'd send the stuff to people and they'd like, make it darker. I, I, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. So those trees will push that mountain back, or those mountains back. I don't want to climb those things. They look pretty rugged. Reflections up here. I'm using a one inch brush to do that. And actually, I'll put a little bit more black into that too. <laughs> Normally, I tell you to clean your brush, but the other side of this brush is pretty clean. So. There's a whole bunch of them out there, Lisa. And if you have questions about any, any of them, just it tell, usually has the name of the painting in the description. Just um, tell me uh, what your question is and what the painting is and like about, you know, at the bottom it shows the minutes, kind of an idea of like where it was, like what are you doing here, if that's the question, if it's kind of a little bit vague like that. just. Uh, Tell me that. Tell me that, and, I, and then I'll be able to answer. I'm glad to answer questions on any anything. All right, so we're gonna put some. Let's put a little bit of land. Let's put a little bit of land in there. Not a lot. But we'll kind of stick to the same. I'm just gonna, I already got that knife loaded, so I'll just pick up another knife. Get off. All right, so let's get some some of this. I think we'll put it and the highlighter on at the same time. So let's just kind of do this. Just, just kind of carrying this highlight, putting it on there. All right, there we go. Now let's take that and put some water lines under that. Now, when you're bringing your water lines across, make sure you keep your knife horizontal because if you don't, it's going to make your water look weird. I don't know how to explain it exactly, other than it makes your water look like it's kind of running off of the canvas. It's, it's very strange. So don't do it. Just keep it, you know, pick it up and move it back or scoot it straight back or whatever, but hold that knife straight. All right, so I'm going to put some water lines out. A little, couple little water lines out here in the middle. Let's pick up one like. Maybe another one over here. I don't know if I'm not going to cover that one up, but. We'll see. Might be nice if I knew what I was going to put in the front. All right, so let's see. We got some black left over here, so let's just. Just paint some landscape in here. And 
maybe let me see like right here. Not not a lot. Make that a little slanted. And longer. Let's take a moment while I get the paint off my hands before I get it all over my brushes. Which, by the way, as an artist, I don't, I don't know if you can ever prevent yourself from doing that because I know I have not. But and, I, and I, if you've ever seen Marion Dutton's apron, oh my lord! <laughs> I used to tease her about it all the time. But she said a dirty apron is a badge of honor. So, but I end up with paint on my face and paint everywhere. I'm not careful. All right, so let's tap in some. Let's kind of put some, make that uneven, so we'll just kind of push those weeds up. And we'll add some, let's add some yellow to that. I'm going to put some rocks and stuff in here too. But let's tap this in first. any fir trees in the first one, so maybe we got enough stuff here to do that. Let's see it. Let's do it. Let's get a brush. We'll use this number six fan brush. And get some paint here. So I'm going to mix up some midnight black and some sap green. I'm just going to mix it on the brush. I'm not going to bother to mix it with a knife. Let's mix it with a brush. Maybe a little bit of a lizard and crimson. Throw in there too. I'll give it sort of a, a brownish color. So let's put a tree in here. I did have a question on the last video. The last video that I did, somebody asked me if uh, why once I pull it down do I flip my brush over? And I was like, uh, I don't know what they're talking about. So I had to go look, and I, I do do that. I don't know why I do it. I guess I don't know why I do it. I just I just do. I don't have a, I don't have a good reason for it. Just because I just tend to do it.
I almost wish they hadn't answered that question because it makes me self-conscious now when I do do it. <laughs> Yeah, I probably ought to throw one more in there just to make it an uneven number. So hang on, let me try to load this brush. Getting, getting low on paint here. Let's put another one right here. And we'll stop right above that grass so that it looks like it's behind it. All right. Clean that brush out, do some highlighting, and do some water lining. All right, put some rocks in here. Still got a bit to go. Uh, let's try this color. I'm mostly looking at what I have left on the palette, I'm trying to use that up. All right, before I, before I highlight the tree, I'm gonna take this knife. I'm gonna take my knife. And, that particular, this particular tree, I just didn't quite get the tip out the way I wanted it to go. There we go. Alright. Alright, so I picked up a lot of color so on that. You see, it, see here on the edge of the brush, I picked up a lot of that dark color. So I could clean the brush, but I'm not. I'm just going to wipe it off. Just wipe the edges off and pick that paint back up again. I'll stick this highlighting the bright side first. It's okay if it gets a little darker as it goes. I'll flip the brush over to the other side. And I can tell you why I do it there. It's because of going back to the fresher paint. Oh my God. You don't want to put too much highlight on your tree so they'll look kind of gaudy. A little bit gaudy. So don't put too much highlight on it. All right. So I'll pick up the dark color and mix that a little bit with this liquid light. With the color that I did on the first side. Let's see if I can pick up any. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I need a little bit of white though. All right. Let's try I'm just going to put a reverse highlight on this side. You probably, I don't know if you'll be able to see that on the monitor or not, because it's, it's, it looks great on the canvas, but I'm not sure that you can see it on the monitor. It's a little bit lighter than the color that's under it, so the trees are really three different colors. And that, that always looks kind of cool. All right. Lisa, you're new here. I'm gl really glad to have you. I'm glad to. Please feel free to share and share this around and tell all your friends. Send me cards and letters. All right. So let's get some shoreline put in here. Let's make these. Let's make these shorelines kind of steep like this. Yeah. All right. a little bit forward. I think I'm going to put a little bit of darker color in to go with that. That'll give it, give it a little bit of edgy, edginess, edginess, with some shadow. Now, the sun's coming from this direction. As you can see from the mountains and from the trees, the reflections are on that side. So, but if it was over there behind the mountains, if it was over there, we'd want to bring the shadows of those trees over this way into the water, but we don't really need to do that for this. But we could pick up some of this darker color and kind of just lightly, lightly shadow of that tree right there. 
the rest of them, I don't think we're sitting close enough that we can probably see. That one's gone. Maybe a little bit right there. There we go. I am going to... I'm going to be taking a trip soon, but when I come back from that trip, I'm going to be trying a new type of oil painting that involves using a lot of liquid and very little magic white or any of that kind of stuff. So, I hope you guys will tune in for that. I hope it doesn't turn into a disaster. But I, I just really need to do it, just so I can spread my skill set up. All right. Borderlands in here. Pull the canvas forward a little bit more again. Let's start the water line up here. And I'm holding my hand behind the canvas just to hold it in place. Let's put a rock right there, why not? So let's pull this up. I want this rock to be a little bit uneven, so make it a big rock. Big rock, big rock. Almost an island to itself. All right. What what kind of problem do you have? Tell me tell me about it, and, and we'll figure it out. I'll, I'll help you with it. Just tell me tell me about it. Is is it when you're when you're trying to make them break, or is it just getting the shape of the mountains, or what? What do you think? So I like this rock. Just like we do the mountains. All right. Now let's reverse highlight it just a little bit with some black. And then let's put some water. Let's put a water line. Right there. Let me step back and look at this. We got one spot I want to do. It's right over here on this mountain. It's right here where I put the reverse highlight on. Kind of went over that cliff and there we go. So let's put some black on here. Maybe some of that darker color. There we go. All right. All right. Highlights and shadows, what's left? <laughs> yeah. When I first started, I had trouble, like, I would get, get confused. Okay, I think, hang on, we'll talk about it in just a second. Let me see if there's anything else I want to do here. So we did mountain skies, trees and clouds, water. For painting number two for the year. Um, yeah, I don't know. Well, I think I'll leave it like it is. I think I'm. I think I'll leave it go. I'm kind of happy with the way it is. Um, let me move this out of the way, and we'll put a canvas up here, and I'll talk about that for a second. I'll talk about that. Let me get a. Hang on a second. Uh, let me get a canvas. Hang on a second. Do, 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 do. All right. Oh, wait a minute. There's one right here. I couldn't find one that was gessoed that was this size. All right, so let's talk about 
directions on canvas because I had problems with that when I started. A lot of problems. And let's do it. Let's do it with some charcoal first. How about that? Can y'all see that okay? Do I need to zoom it in some? I'm gonna wait. It takes about a 30 second from the time I move it till the time you guys, till I can see it on the monitor, so. Okay, I think you can see that pretty good. So, we'll just, we'll put a mountain up here to start with. So, the first thing to realize about the mountain is that in the beginning, you don't care what's going on in the middle. What you're really concerned about is the edge, right? So think of it with a piece of chalk. You just kind of draw this mountain. Yeah, don't ever make them pointed. Don't don't make them go like this. That's terrible. Don't do that. It's not really terrible, but you know, yeah. Don't do it that way. Mountains don't look like that. All right. Now, so once you have your edge, then you start kind of wondering about where it's going to highlight and where it's not going to highlight because every brush stroke on, a, on and every knife stroke on a mountain makes a difference. So if your highlight is on this side, that means that if the light's angled up, right, that if you kind of split the mountain down the middle, which we're just doing this for show, all your highlight on all of your mountains should be to the right of that line, right? So highlight on this side, highlight on this side, highlight on this side. If the X was on the other side, then it, you wouldn't want it, wouldn't want it to be that way. So let me see if I can wipe this. If I can't wipe this off. We'll just continue on. But I don't know that works okay. Sort of kind of. I'll, I'll wash this thing off later. But so let's go back to the mountain for again for a second. So here's the part that used to confuse me. I put the highlight on, and I'm kind of like. Going like this. And then I want to put the reverse highlight on. And I'm suddenly confused. I, I can't, I'm like, does it go like this? That didn't seem right. But I, I was constantly getting in a, in a stretch, especially if the mountain highlights moved, like if they came down like this. So that the highlight, most of the highlight was on this side and the dark side was on this side, right? So the easiest way to try to well, there's there's two two different ways that you can kind of or that I use to resolve that problem. Get my chalk back up here a little bit more. So again, don't you like how creatively handy I am at just throwing chalk around? All right, so <laughs> okay, so let's put our mountain back up here again. Here's the thing you remember. The slant that you the slant that you want it doesn't matter. This line does matter whether it goes like this. Let's just say that the highlight goes like this, and all highlights belong to the right hand side of this line. Your highlight should always slant in that direction. Your reverse highlight should always go in the opposite direction. So, if you think about it without the mountain, let's kind of draw it up. Let's see, let's see if this. If your highlight is being pulled down like this, the opposite side should be pulled down just like that. Does that make sense? So it goes like this, it goes like this, it goes like that, it goes like that. And then, you know, there you go. So if you come down this and you just keep this going straight, and it's really funny, the way I figured this out, interestingly enough, was using a pencil. I'm not. I can't. I, I'm not a very good drawer, as you can see, as as my talent is, is demonstrating. I'm not a good drawer, but you can see by simply by pulling this in two different directions, you can tell where the highlight is. Now I'll show you exactly what I mean in a smaller format. And this might, you might try this exercise. It worked out really good for me. But everything, you know, everything doesn't work for everybody. I use these little, I use these little sketchbooks. 
So, and here's a prime example of one of where I was trying to figure out how highlights and sloping and stuff like that would work. So let me put this up here where you can see it. So I just use a pencil, I sketched in the, the ridge of the mountains, and then I just slowly worked my way forward in the landscape. And all I was doing was using the same exact hardness of pencil and everything, no strange pencil colors or lightener, harder or softer, or some of that doesn't even make any sense, that doesn't make any difference to me. But um, just looking at how to, and you can see like, Here's one that I did. I didn't do two shifts. This is when I was still trying to figure it out. Look, you can see I, I couldn't keep it straight. I couldn't figure it out straight. It's a, it's a groovy little picture, but the, the highlighting is terrible. Here's another really terrible one. So, um, but, as you move through this, and here's one where I was just getting around to figuring out that where the edge of the mountains would have been in a painting, right? So even though I have those back mountains, the edge actually isn't down here, it's way up here, right? So it's stay up from the top. So that's that's something I've used in the past that's worked really good for me. I was gonna look to see if I had some later drawings that, well, I, did, I did the same thing for learning the edges. Let's see. So maybe that'll, maybe that'll help you. Um, it also, I know it's also helped me for like, uh, when I was doing, uh, some science fiction pictures and learning to draw craters and things like that. I have another one of these books around here somewhere. Here it is. Uh, let's see. Hang on. I'm constantly sketching in these things. Yeah, see? Here's another one. So it, it worked out pretty good for me to, to, to just kind of draw that out like that. And here, here's where, uh, here's one more. I'm not going to bore you with any more of these. Here's one more where I was just trying to figure out how sketching downward would create a cliff face, just like we did on that mountain a few minutes ago. So, anyway, I hope that helps. But I guess that about wraps it up. Um, did two paintings today. Uh, probably do a couple more. I'm, I'm leaving on a trip next Friday. And then I'll be back in a week. And then we'll get down to some serious painting after that. Um, we'll be doing lots of new kinds of things. Uh, we'll, be, we'll still be doing mountains and stuff like we, like we do too. But I want to, we're going to focus topically on some things like uh, building a crimson sky. Things like that. So I hope all you guys will tune in. And thanks for all your support last year and all the support you're giving me this year. Um, the next time we do a video, we will be giving away two paintings, um, an 8x10. If you go back and look at my library, you'll see them. One is an 8x10 of a little snowman, a little unprecocious snowman. <laughs> my favorite remark I got about him. Uh, we'll be giving that away, and we'll be giving away uh, another 8x10 that's like a winter scene. And then um, I think maybe the one time after that, I have a different painting to give away that's a space scene, so we'll for somebody. Anyway, thanks you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.